Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. In this section and the next couple of sections we're going to look at sorting, filtering and grouping. Now I'm going to assume that you have some basic knowledge and experience on each of those but I'm going to concentrate on filling in perhaps a couple of details that you may not be aware of and I'm going to start by looking at sorting. Now, sorting applies to tasks or resources, and you've basically got a couple of ways of doing it. Now, I'm currently looking at Gantt chart view here for website version 9. And when you sort, you're basically sorting the tasks in this case. By default, the tasks are sorted into ID sequence. So as you can see in the ID numbers on the left there, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Now, if I wanted to sort by something else, let's suppose I want to sort by the total cost column there, there is a little arrow to the right. And when I click on it, it gives me the option to sort smallest to largest or largest to smallest. Now, if you don't see the little drop down arrows on the right there, for instance, of the heading for total cost, if you go to the view tab and in the data group and in filter, just make sure that you have their display auto filter. If you don't have auto filter selected, then you won't be able to see those drop down arrows. Now, let me go back to smallest to largest. Now, strictly speaking, this is not really smallest to largest. Well, not quite anyway, because although the very first entry there, note that zero will stay at the top anyway, the first entry is task 24, go live with a total cost of zero. There are two or three other zeros there, but they don't appear near the top. And the reason they don't is that this type of sort preserves the structure of the project. So if you take, for example, the task with ID 6, requirement sign off, which has a total cost of zero, the reason that doesn't move up nearer to the beginning of the list is because it's part of the summary task requirements. And this type of sort does not split summary tasks up. The same goes for a couple of other occurrences of zero. So when we're talking about sorting this into ascending order, it is ascending order, but it's respecting the structure of the project as well. So I'll come back to that point in just a moment. Now, another point to bear in mind is that once you've sorted them, that sort will remain even if you change the table that's in view. If you ever have any doubts about which table you've actually got at the moment, you know you can go to the drop down up in tables and the one with the tick next to it is the one that you're currently using. Now, if I wanted to change that table, so if I right click in the corner here and just say go for the entry table, the sort order stays the same. Even though you can no longer see the total cost column, it's still sorted in that sequence. So that shows how to sort using one of the columns currently displayed in whichever table that you've got displayed. There's also a sort dialog. So let's go back to the view tab and the data group. And you'll see there we have a sort button. And if we click the drop down, we have some options. So if I go to sort by, you'll see one of the options there in the sort dialog is reset and that will reset the sort order back to the default sort order by ID. So let's click reset. You can see it's changed to ID. And now if I click sort, it will sort it back by ID number. Now what I'm going to do now is once again to sort this particular project by cost. So I'm going to use the dialog this time. So again, sort, sort by. And if I click the drop down where we currently have ID, you can see I get a very, very long list. So I'm going to search. So I'm going to type in C and I'm going to select cost. But this time I'm going to uncheck the box at the bottom that says keep outline structure. This is the point I was referring to just now. Now when I click on sort, the project really is sorted by cost. Even the project summary task is sorted by cost. So for summary tasks, their cost is the cost of all of their constituent tasks. But of course, the tasks and the summary task have effectively got split apart from each other. 
and you can no longer see the structure as such within the project. So if you really do need to sort independently of the project structure, you can do it using the sort dialog. However, on this occasion, I'm going to undo the insert of the column and put everything back the way it was. Now I've got a couple of other things about sorting to demonstrate, but I'm going to demonstrate those using the resource sheet for this project. Sometimes when you're working on the development of a schedule, you may add resources as you become aware of the need for them or their availability. And you may finish up with all of your resources a bit sort of higgledy-piggledy on the resource sheet. And one approach to this is that as you get towards the latter stages of preparing the schedule, you may decide to make your resource sheet a little bit better organised. So in this case, we might say, well, we think that's all the resources. Why don't we now put them into, say, alphabetical order? But not only that, why don't we put the externals together and the internals together? Now, that's something you can do with sorting. Now, if I go up to the sort drop down again, note the options that we have here for sorting the resource sheet. So we have three. We can sort by cost, by name or by ID. But you also have access to the sort dialog by clicking on sort by. And on this occasion, I'm going to do two levels of sorting. So first of all, I'm going to sort by group and I'm just going to search for it. So sort by group ascending and then I'm going to sort by name. And on this occasion, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to permanently renumber the resources by checking that box. And what that means is that although I've got numbers there, for example, one for Bakersfield Associates, two for contract consultants, so on and so forth, in the longer term, it may make more sense if they were numbered in a sequence which, for instance, gives lower ID numbers to the external resources. So rather than stick with the numbers that were allocated when I entered the resources, let's have a little bit more organisation in the number scheme. So let's renumber the resources as we go. So bear in mind, at the moment, Bakersfield Associates is one, contract consultant is two, so on and so forth. So let's do a sort. And there we go. Now, there wasn't too much change at the top here, but a number of my other resources were sorted. And it has also put the external resources first. So Bakersfield, contract consultant, Northern Farm Foods, people for people, and then we have our internal resources underneath. And of course, everybody has been renumbered within their category of group according to their alphabetical sequence. So you've seen there with sorting tasks and with sorting resources that although the general pattern is the same, you do get some differences which are specific to the view. It's also the case that with some views of a project, you can't sort at all. So for instance, if I go to Network Diagram View, it wouldn't really make any sense to be able to sort that. So in fact, the sort button, as you see it, is greyed out. So that's it on sorting. Please join me in the next section when we'll look at filtering.